So a question that you might get in coding interviews, etc., is to find the XOR value of all integers in a range of numbers. So let's say from A to B, and you want to do this in the fastest way possible. We consider A and B to be positive integers, so we don't have to worry about the signs in the beginning of the binary representation, okay? So first we will answer another question, and we will use the answer from that question to answer the initial question we have here. Okay, so the question that we, we will ask is to find the XOR value of all integers in the range from 1 to n. Okay, so the naive solution will be to just go through all the numbers and apply the XOR operation. And that will give you a linear time. Okay, so I'm telling you now that the best solution has a, a constant time complexity. You can pause the video and think about the solution. I will spoil the hints uh, step by step. So here I go for the first hint. So zero is the neutral element of the XOR operation. So we know that A XOR zero equals to A. So you have to think about this. Okay, now the second hint is, we start from zero, then something happens every fourth number. So zero, one, two, three, something will happen in number three. And this something will happen in the fourth number again, the next fourth number, which is seven. And you will have to notice what this is and use it to get the uh, co constant time uh, solution, okay? So the answer now, I'm going to show the answer. So the best solution is to notice that the result resets every four numbers, and that will help you to get the constant time solution. So the answer is that we modulo n with four, and then we get the result in a variable, for example, and then if that result is zero, then we return n. If the result is one, you return one, if the result is 2, you return n plus 1. And if the result equals to 3, then you return 0. So now we will prove why this answer is correct. Okay, so this can be done very easily and constructively. So we get four consecutive integers, a, a plus 1, and a plus 2, and a plus 3, so four numbers. So we go a, a plus 1, a plus 2, and a plus 3. So what I did here was to get the binary representation of A. We know that the leading digits we don't know of, okay? We don't know of these digits. Uh, they are unknown to us, but we do know the last two digits. These two digits are said to be zero since A modulo four equals zero. So for sure these, num these two digits are said to be zero, okay? So now we can extract the binary representations of the next three numbers. So the first digits will remain the same if we add one, and only the last digit will be set to one, okay? Uh, the same happens with the next uh, number. So we have the same digits in front, then we add one, then you have one and zero, and the last number, a plus three, it is the same, digits, these digits do not change and you get one and the last digit changes, so you get one and one, the last two digits, okay? So these are the binary representations. And now to get the XOR of these four numbers, for each column, for each digit actually, for each power of two, we will do the XOR. So we know that for this column, for example, you have the same digit repeated four times. We know that uh, each digit, when you XOR it with itself, it will return zero. So if you have to do this uh, like in two pairs, like you can get the first pair, get zero, get the second pair and get zero. And then you have, if you exhort zero with zero, you get zero, okay? So we know that this column which will return zero. The next, the same happens with the other columns until the last two. So we get zero, zero and zero for all the leading elements. And now we can Go ahead and see what happens in these two columns. So you have two aces. So you have one, XOR, one, and then you have zeros, okay? This is the same for both columns because you have two aces, and you can, as you can see, like, go and underline them with uh, red. So you have two aces in the second line and two aces in the first line from, uh, from the right, yes, okay? So two aces. You know that ace with ace, when you XOR them, you will get zero. 
so you have zero XOR zero XOR zero. So this sorry. So this you have zero XOR zero XOR zero, and then you will get zero to be the answer. So again, this will be reset to zero for both columns. Okay. So we do know that every four numbers, the XOR of these four numbers, it is zero. Okay. So we're going to use this. And now we also will rephrase the question. So the result we will get is the same in both questions. So find the XOR value of all integers in the range from zero to one. Instead of one to, uh, to n, you get zero to n because we have this property zero XOR a will give you a. So it doesn't change the answer we will give. Okay, so we are going to use a variable. We're going to name this variable previous. And this variable will represent the XOR of all the numbers until n minus one. So until before n, uh, we assume that we know the answer, okay? So we will prove that this variable will always be zero in the event that n modulo four equals to zero, okay? So let me draw this for you, sorry. So if n modulo four equals zero, First of all, we know that uh, we start from zero. That was the answer, that was the question we had. So we have zero, one, two, three, it goes up until n, okay? And uh, we also know that this range until n minus one, so from zero until n minus one, we know that we have n numbers, okay? So this segment here from zero to n minus one, it can be divided into four into segments of four numbers each. Okay, so from one until three is the first segment. From four until seven is the second number. It's the second second segment, and this goes until a minus sorry n minus four until n minus one. Okay, and then you have n your number. Okay, so we know that we have proved that each segment will return zero, okay? So you know that the answer for this is zero. The answer for this is zero. So you are doing zero XOR zero and you do this until number N. So we know that the previews, which this is the result for previews, will be zero, okay, sorry. Okay, so the result for previews will be set to be zero, okay? Now we will uh, use this to extract the answer for all the uh, coming numbers from n until n plus three, okay? So if n modulo four is zero, we have uh, proved that previous equals to zero, and this is the binary presentation of our number. So if we do previous XOR n to get the result until n, it is going to be zero XOR n, which will give you n, okay? Now, if the modulo equals to one, then this is a binary representation. And the previous will be n minus one, since it was n before, the solution was n before, now it, it is going to be n minus one because n equals to uh, the next number. So the previous number is n minus one, okay? So we know that previous equals to n minus one. So if we do previous XOR n, you have n minus one, which has this binary representation, XOR n, which we know has this binary presentation. So if you get these two binary presentations and you do XOR on them, since these elements are the same for both numbers, so the, these digits are the same, the only difference is the last digit, you will get one as your answer, okay? Now, in the event that n modulo four equals to two, then this is your binary presentation, okay? and previous is one, we have proved this here. So the solution is one. So we do previous XOR n again. So one XOR n for this binary presentation will give you n plus one, since we have one here, the last digit, and we just XOR it, XOR it with the last digit of the binary presentation, which is zero, and thus we set it to one. So it's like we're adding one to our number. So it's n plus one. Again, uh, we use the previous result again to find the next number, which is the for modulo four. Okay, for, so for modulo four equals three. 
then we have this binary representation and the previous is equal to, to n because it was n plus one before. So it is equal to n now because the previous number for us is uh, n minus one. So n plus one for that number gives us n, okay? It's pretty obvious. Uh, again, so if we do previous XOR n, you have n XOR n, so the answer resets, it gets uh, to zero. And now we have for all uh, four possible modules that you, that you can get with uh, four, you have the answers, okay? So this was the answers, okay? And now we have put them here. Now we can answer our initial question, which to remind you it was to find the XOR value of all integers in a range from A to B, with A and B being positive integers. And this is uh, found very simply, now that we have uh, answered the previous question. So we get that uh, the result for one until B will be, can be cut into uh, parentheses. So from one until A plus A minus one, uh, XOR from A to B, okay? So you have this small and easy proof that you can uh, check yourself. So if we have a z equals to y xor x, we know that z xor y equals to x. So we get the first parenthesis that we have on the left hand side here. And we xor it with, uh, with this parenthesis here until a minus one. So the remaining numbers uh, will be the answer that we're searching for. So A until B. So that was the question we have. We know that we find this in constant time, this in constant time again, as we have proved before. And uh, thus these will get, we will get this answer again also in constant time. So that, pre that was pretty much it. I'm going to leave uh, a paste link to these uh, notes here for you to use. And uh, I will see you in whatever I will do next. I hope this helps. If it did help, give me a like, subscribe guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.